Hello 3D printer peeps. I'm here sitting next to the ginormous Creality Ender 5 Plus and in my hand is the all new Creality Spider 4 known as the Speedy Spider. While it hasn't been long since Creality released the Spider 3, which is in my opinion their best hot end to date, they have already succeeded that hot end with this hot end, the Speedy Spider. Also, if you have an Ender 3 Pro, it has the exact same hot end and hot end cover, and the new Speedy Spider will fit right into it the exact same way through the exact same process we are about to do. Here is the new Spider 4, aka the Speedy Spider. Right away, you will notice it's quite different from the standard hot ends you are used to. For example, here is the beautiful Spider 3. You will see that the Speedy Spider doesn't have a heat block or a silicon boot on that heat block. Instead, the Speedy Spider simply has the 360 degree ceramic heater tube and a silicon nipple covering the nozzle. That nipple simply pops off. Speaking of nozzles, this is a standard MK8 nozzle which is an excellent correction from Creality over using proprietary spider nozzles. This means you can use nozzles that are easy to get and reasonably priced. I believe this to be the HFMK, the high flow hardened steel nozzle, and the kit comes with a 0.4 installed and a 0.8 in the package, as well as a spare silicone nipple. It's super cool of Creality to include a spare silicone nipple and it's neat of them to include a different size hardened steel nozzle. I am surprised that they went for a 0.4 and a 0.8 rather than a 0.4 and a 0.6. The 0.8 is a large step up, but for a hot end that's being advertised as speedy, maybe the 0.8 makes sense. However, I do believe the term speedy applies to this awesome new ceramic heater that is said to heat your hot end from zero to 200 in as little as 40 seconds. Let's put the silicon nipple back on and install this sucker. Did you see how easy that was? Times are changing from this gigantic silicon boot that has to be routed around a whole bunch of holes and wires and only fits in one direction. Silicon boot. Silicon nipple. You may notice two bundles of wires in your kit. These are extensions for the two wires and connectors on your Speedy Spider. I spoke to Creality and these two connectors enable you to install the Speedy Spider directly to an Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, Ender 3 version 2, and Ender 3 Max without having to cut off these connectors and splice them yourself. For all other printers, we will be cutting these connectors off and splicing it to the existing thermostat and heater wiring. Pro tip for those of you who don't feel like splicing this many wires, the harness that comes with this nozzle is compatible with the Ender 5 Plus. You can simply take the harness, plug one end into the thermistor on the hot end, and the other end into the nozzle thermistor connector coming out of the power supply. And that's it, you are done. The thermistor is wired. Okay, let's get our surgery started and clear some space for our wiring. So if your wiring is inside a case and you have any zip ties on that case, just clip it off so you can expose some of that wiring. Underneath that case, you may find you have another case. Clip that off also. And pull back whatever is covering it to expose some of your wiring. Now, to swap the hot end, we're going to have to remove the Bowden tube. So let's leave the cover on while we heat up the hot end and remove the Bowden tube. Your machine's firmware may be different, so go ahead and do the process you do to preheat your hot end. Some people may tell you your hot end needs to be 9,000 degrees, but it doesn't. Just get it warmed up. Anything over 160, 170 is probably good enough. And then slip your tool over the coupler and loosen it up. You should find that the coupler loosens pretty easily. And as it starts to loosen, just keep turning. The idea is to completely unscrew the coupler. Once the coupler is almost completely unscrewed, 
you can grab the Bowden tube and start to wiggle and gently pull upward. And there you go, it's out. Now we can go ahead and turn the machine off. With the machine off, we will go ahead and remove the cover. For mine, I'm going to use a mini electric Ryobi screwdriver. So I'll use the cheap old Allen key that came with it. With the case unscrewed, simply gently move it aside. And there it is, the archaic hot end on our Ender 5 Plus. Getting this off is a piece of cake. We are simply going to remove these two screws. And there you have it, it's that simple. We're left with nothing but the back plate. In the kit the Spider hot end came with, you will find two screws. Use those screws to install it to the back plate. They even kindly included a little Allen key. How nice of them. In case I was rudely blocking your view, those are the two screws that we just installed. Now it's time to put the cover back on. It kind of looks like the cover is going to make it difficult to remove this blue clip for the Bowden tube. So let's install our Bowden tube now. Pull the blue clip out and take note that we won't be using this coupler anymore. Unfortunately, the sad truth is these shark bite type couplers from Creality don't really work properly. When you push this ring in, you may find that it doesn't release the teeth at all. In that case, take the blue Bowden cutting tool and cut it off. Say a short prayer that you still got enough Bowden left. If you don't, there's a link to buy a new one in my description. Speaking of decoupling rings that don't work, that is the only thing we have on the new Speedy Spider. Gee, I don't know what that means. Take your Bowden and push it down until it stops. It will only go down a tiny bit. Let's try to release and decouple the Bowden. How about that? It actually worked. Put it back in. Don't forget the blue clip. Push it underneath. Once the cover is on, you won't be getting access to that again without removing the cover. Speaking of the cover, we are going to put that on right now. Don't forget, your probe needs to go back on. Okay guys, so I took the two extension cords that came with the Speedy Spider, and I cut a short piece off each one of them. I am going to splice these wires to the Speedy Spider so that I don't have to cut off the connections on the Speedy Spider. In other words, instead of cutting off these connectors from the Speedy Spider, I will connect the pieces from the extension and splice the extension pieces instead leaving the connectors intact. To do this, we are gonna pull any shielding you have back, and I'm simply going to put a binder clip on the wire to keep the shielding from moving. We will expose the heater wire, which is this thick red wire, and the thermistor wire, which is this thin white wire. The thermistor on the Speedy is the white silverish cable, and the heater is the black cable. If you have doubts, just look at this number on the wire and Google it. It shows up as a thermistor. Go ahead and strip these wires with the tool of your choice. I'm using a Klein stripper. Using a quality tool like this makes your job just a little bit easier. And here I've got four nice clean strips. Go ahead and do the same thing to the hot end. You can actually make it easier for yourself by unclipping it. When you go ahead and crimp these, you may want to connect it to make sure you don't get confused and you do the right thing. Otherwise, if you're sure you can handle it, you can disconnect it while you crimp it. Creality tells you to use needle nose pliers. I wouldn't do that, but if you're gonna use pliers, at least use something serious like this. 
However, I'd rather use something like this. This is a double tooth Klein crimper. It will crush the tube in two spots using two teeth and it is a ratcheting crimper. So once you close it, it stays put and you can adjust the wires before applying the final pressure. That allows you to crimp it while it stays in place. Repeat this on the other three wires. But we're not done yet. We have to melt these bullets. These are shrink bullets. They have an adhesive in them. When you apply heat, the adhesive will melt as the plastic shrinks and it will glue all of these wires together nicely. Reality says to use a lighter to do this. Please don't do that. Use a heat gun, set it to a couple hundred degrees and carefully shrink these tubes. And there you go. We've wired the Speedy Spider to the Ender 5 Plus. And in theory, our installation is complete. Now go ahead and tidy up your cables however you like. There's about 9,000 different ways that people do it. I bundled mine up through one of those little plastic cable organizing tubes and then just use some zip ties to hold it in place. All right, the machine is on and the thermistor is working because it's reading a temperature. If it reads minus 15, it is not seeing your thermistor and you need to check your wires. The first thing I'm going to do is run a PID tune. Everybody's using different firmware, so you go ahead and learn how to do it on your firmware. For mine it's as easy as pressing start and that's the good words we're looking to see finished that means not only is the heater working but the thermistor is working as well reality says we can get to 200 in about 40 seconds let's put that to the test and go Not bad, we got zero to 200 in a minute and three seconds. I'll take it. There you have it. We've installed the Creality Speedy Spider Hot End on the gigantic Ender 5 Plus. Unless you've been following along on your Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro, you either spliced your own wires or used the included harness for the thermistor, which is a really nice shortcut. And everything went back together smoothly using the original fan cover and hardware. The only new hardware we used was changing the two screws in the hot end, which came with the kit. Going forward, you'll have the benefits of an all metal heat break, higher quality nozzles, and faster warm up times. I'm Greg Adventure, your instructor on 3DRundown.com. This is the 3D Rundown YouTube channel, and installing the Creality Speedy Spider on the Ender 5 Plus or the Ender 3 Ender 3 Pro was today's adventure. <laughs>